Well, you were talking there about the expectation that there is a big government package of help on the way, and it looks like there is, but it might be turning up a bit quicker uh, than expected. The package, as speculated, could well have uh, warm homes discount measures, which would put money back into people's uh, pockets to help with uh, energy bills. Other measures as well, messages gone across Whitehall to try and pull together as many things as possible that might make f people feel better about uh, withstanding the pressures on cost of living. But there was a great expectation that that was actually coming uh, 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 more than a week away, the week beginning the 6th of uh, June. Suddenly, there is breakneck speed work going on in Whitehall to try and get the whole thing ready uh, for Thursday. And it could well include the windfall tax uh, measure that we've been uh, talking about there, making up some of the uh, costs, though probably not meeting all of the uh, costs of what's being given to people. Why is it being done so quickly? Now, of course, any government would want to uh, announce uh, good news, help for people who are uh, potentially facing uh, distress with their bills as soon as possible. But something else, I think, is going on here as well, because there is now a strong expectation that we're getting, finally, the Sue Gray report into Partygate that everybody's been waiting for for so long. Getting it tomorrow, it is expected. Nothing confirmed yet, but that is the expectation. And if you were Boris Johnson, you'd try and get the uh, Treasury working at breakneck speed to try and have something ready for the next day, for Thursday, to try and change the narrative back to uh, something uh, a little more positive and also try and make Tory MPs who might just feel that the Sue Gray report provokes them to put in a vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister to reflect on how that might look a little petty, perhaps, set against the major government business that's uh, uh, being done uh, from the Treasury. As I say, still no confirmation that they're going to get there, but there is definitely a buster-gut effort going on uh, in the Treasury tonight to try and get all the announcements ready uh, for Thursday. And that just tells you how nervous the government is about the Sue Gray uh, report. The Times this morning giving a flavour of that, the suggestion there that the meeting the Prime Minister had with Sue Gray, we now know, at the beginning of this month at Number 10's instigation in that meeting, the Prime Minister raising the whole idea that maybe, maybe uh, her report, maybe, didn't have to be seen at all by anyone. Why did you try and stop Sue Gray publishing her report, Prime Minister? The Emir of Qatar's arrival ambushed by questions about a meeting between the Prime Minister and Sue Gray at the beginning of this month. Today, Number 10 was challenged about a story in The Times alleging the Prime Minister used that interview to ask Sue Gray, is there really much point in publishing that report? Now there's so much information out there. Number 10 was careful to deny that Boris Johnson had ever asked Sue Gray to drop her report. But that's not what The Times story said. It suggested he'd been much subtler, implying she might like to rethink her plans even though the Prime Minister himself had repeatedly told the nation her report would be a moment of truth. And all I ask is that we must wait for the outcome of the investigations by Sue Gray. Sue Gray, Sue Gray. Gray. Wait for, for Sue Gray to report. But her report is still expected imminently. Now coming in the wake of photos broadcast by ITV News of the Prime Minister toasting his departing head of communications during the second national lockdown. Today, a potential challenger for the leadership of the Tory party seemed to signal these images had crossed a line. Seriousness in government, seriousness in politics are fundamental to the security and protection of the British people. And I'm afraid when I see those photographs, it doesn't look serious, does it? What makes you say that? It's a moment of national emergency. You look at those photos, tell me what you see. The Mayor of London has written to the acting Metropolitan Police Commissioner demanding a public explanation why Boris Johnson wasn't fined for attending the Leaving Do captured in photos when others were. But if we're going to you know, ensure the public has confidence in the police, if we're going to make sure that our policing by consent model continues going forward, if we're going to make sure questions of integrity aren't raised, I think it's right that the police you know, explain how they reach their conclusions. If Sue Gray's report is in the government's hands tomorrow morning, the plan is for the Prime Minister to take questions from MPs on it, then subject himself to a press conference. More questions. More questions from Tory MPs in a private meeting. And at the end of all that, he hopes, be able to turn round and say he's answered everything anyone could ask 
it's time for the country to move on. He'll be particularly hoping that his own Tory MPs heed that instruction. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Westminster. Well, earlier I spoke to the Conservative MP Brendan Clark Smith, and I started by asking him if he thought that the Prime Minister lied to Parliament when he said there wasn't a lockdown party in Downing Street in November 2020. I don't think that's necessarily the case, Cathy. I think he said that, uh, well, was there a party he didn't believe there was? The Metropolitan Police have investigated this. The Prime Minister has not received a fine for it. Um, I'd say that they've been through all the evidence there and uh, they decided that the account that he's given is obviously, um, in terms of his own knowledge, the correct one. But I'm not asking you about whether the Prime Minister should have been fined or not. I'm just asking you about that comment to Parliament where he said categorically, no, there was not a party in Downing Street on the November the 13th. How well, else was... are you to interpret that photo? But this is a workplace as well, Cathy, and, you know, I, I would contrast that to you look at the, the opposition, uh, what's going on there, you know, we, we saw Keir Starmer with a beer, was that a party? He said no. So I don't think having alcohol in presence necessarily makes it a party, uh, neither does going into a room giving a speech or so on. So I, I think we should wait for the Sue Gray report so at least we get the full context on this. Right, so when you've seen the full context, will you be considering your position, whether you still back the Prime Minister or, you know, given that he has been fined, he's the first sitting Prime Minister to break the law in office, he's been accused of knowingly misleading Parliament, you're standing up here still giving him your backing, will you back him whatever? Well, I think the only people who've had the full information so far, certainly not me, has been Sue Gray and, of course, the Metropolitan Police. The Metropolitan Police have decided that no fine was going to be issued there, so I'm happy that they know more about it than me. And, again, I, I wouldn't take it just from one photograph. So I think we're all anticipating what Sue Gray is going to say. I know she did their interim report and there's maybe some extra things to say there. I'm sure we're going to act on that and I'm sure we'll all bear that in mind. But, of course, the Prime Minister did pay the fine before. He held his hands up. I know some people may have felt hard done by uh, if they were fined for a similar thing, but he, he took responsibility for it. He's taken responsibility for the wider culture there. And I think that's what's going to be addressed tomorrow when he apologises, no doubt, again for that. And you're content to back a lawbreaker in office? I, I certainly am, and I, th I think the Prime Minister's had many achievements so far. I think he's still got a long time in office as well, and we want to work on those things that we promised people in the general election. Now we're coming out of the pandemic and we can deal with cost of living, really, which is more important to people, I think, than this Westminster bubble where we're continually going over the same ground again. Nobody's above the law, but it seems that in this government you can break the law and nothing happens to you, you just keep your job. Well, people unwittingly make mistakes, and I think when the in inquiry comes out later and we actually also uh, look at what we did during COVID, maybe rules could have been clearer, maybe there were too many grey areas in there, and maybe that was a mistake. But no, Prime I'm sorry, Minister there was no said... grey area here. Parties were quite clearly illegal during that lockdown that had been imposed a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. He didn't unwittingly break the law. He wittingly, knowingly, went to a party. I don't think that's the case, Cathy, and I think, again, uh, the, uh, the Sue Gray report, uh, again, without preempting it, I'm not sure whether it's going to say that at all. The, the Metropolitan Police don't believe the Prime Minister's gone to a party or they would have, they would have surely fined him for that, and they didn't.